Taking a quick step back, let's have a look at what we've just achieved throughout this section. Our goal was to create a P&L model for our logistics business based on an investment plan to grow to the rest of the US and expand our manufacturing footprint to achieve optimal future supply chain costs. We started very simply with an estimated number of orders that we expect to sell per CBSA around the country, using a simple extrapolation method we determined in the previous section. We put together a basic back of the envelope financial model to determine what our aggregate economics would be for the year and then for each quarter based on the underlying assumptions. We applied some clever adoption curve and future geographic growth modeling to figure out what our likely household penetration and orders per period would be for every period in our model based on some fairly clever underlying assumptions. And then we built a very sophisticated supply chain optimization model using a combination of a scenarios approach with some simple logic and ultimately with some clever use of data tables. And finally, we put all this together in just a few minutes and clicks to create a pretty comprehensive P&L model that not only maps out a bottoms up estimate of our future five year costs, but very quickly adds a cumulative cash flow position and an overall investment attractiveness metric, which lets us make decisions about how to proceed. Stepping up yet another level, this is an approach that you can easily take with any problem that you might have. So to conclude this Excel modeling basics section of this Beyond Formulas training, let's review how we got here. We built a pretty sophisticated modular model using encapsulation so that each independent step was fairly simple, but the sum of all the fairly simple steps resulted in something really powerful. We started by solving the problem with a problem statement, a firm understanding of the mechanics, and a detailed analysis plan on paper. We went and gathered the necessary data and assumptions to perform the required analysis, including a whole lot of cleaning up and formatting of the data. We converted our plan model logic into a simple back of the envelope single period model to capture this plan and give us day one insights. We added things like adoption curves and geographic rollout curves so that we could model the effects of time and scale on our simple single period model. In particular, we looked at adoption and rollout, a full supply chain cost model, and a full supply chain optimization model based on that cost model using data tables. And finally, we put it all back together again to create a sophisticated multi-period P&L combining your basic logic with your scale and time inputs. This concludes the modeling basics section, and I'd like to thank you for covering this huge amount of ground with me. In the next section, we'll learn how to take this still further by looking at sensitivities and scenario analyses to understand the uncertainty implicit in the model we've just created.